So we're going to do a quick and simple door card removal process. This is what most refer to as the door card. It is the whole outside skinned assembly that you see here. Uh, it's pretty simple to remove. You do this if you were electrical problem, modification, replacing your speakers, which is in my case what I'm doing. So first thing you want to do is up here inside this door pocket. There is a little plastic protector. Some people have the metal upgraded one, so you know how I'm talking about. I've already got this loose, but there's a little gap over here. You just put your uh, pry tool behind it, or even a flathead if you want to. Um, if you use a flathead, wrap the tip in painter's tape to help eliminate scratching the crap out of everything you own. And then down here, in the cup holder pocket, or hand grip pocket, there's a little rubber piece down below. Each one of these has a Phillips screw behind them. And then over here on this side, which is going to be a bit harder to show, there is a end piece here. You just put your pry tool in and pop it open. Better look at the little door trim piece. It's this little end thing pops off. And then inside of here, there's another screw right in the back. Another Phillips. After that, we've got the screws there removed. If you follow this door card seam here, you'll notice that it's tight all the way around, except for directly underneath the speaker, there is a little groove that you can actually get your hand behind. You can also use a uh, plastic pry tool, if that is your preference, certainly better than beating your hands up. So just go in there and pull out. I've already got it popped. Once you get one clip popped, it's usually a lot quicker. Um, and then just work your way around, and they all pop out. Now once you've got to the point where it all kind of tips out freely, you're going to hit the next part, which is the upper window portion. This is actually kind of hooked over top of this. So what you'll need to do is pull up and then actually tip it past this window trim. Show this again here. Because this is probably going to hold a few people up. So this window trim right here, you can see it's flush with it. You pull it, pull the door card up, and then pop it out. And now you can see we're nice and loose. Now that the door card's free, tip it up. You're going to go up on an angle, and then rock it back. Now the reason we wrap the rocket back is because over here we have this this little mirror corner that you actually have to pull it out from under. So once you get behind here, there's a few connectors. There's an electrical connector. You can go ahead and disconnect that. And then there is two door handle lock connectors. So um, this one, let me see if I can show it. I'm trying not to let my door card hit the ground here. Um, you can see this little black tab. You just pull that and that whole thing actually releases. Now this has white lithium grease all over it. And you'll see, I got it on my hand. Try not to get that on your door because it'll be a pain in the ass to get off. Closer inspection shows some of the drawbacks to modifying your vehicle. Uh, very simple. You can see the green clip there. There's also another one right there. Um, those clips are supposed to be in the door card. Simple enough though, all we're going to do is go in on each side and actually pop that out of the door and then put it back in the door card. So let me go ahead and get on that. When you pull these clips out, you can see it's got uh, these two little side things. If you uh, take your cute pink handled pliers and you actually squeeze that, that's how you can pop them out. I like to use these uh, jeweler's pliers, they're very handy for different things but get in behind it. Um, you might scratch up the door a little bit. There's some itty bitty scratches there, but you're not gonna see it, so it's not a huge deal. But once you get it out, if you go over to your door card, zoomed in on it now, you can see there's a little notch here. I know the video quality is not the greatest. It's a little light, and I'm trying to make it easier to upload. But uh, take your clip, this big portion here, and it just pops in behind that. Um, if you need a better example, you can look at one of the ones that didn't fall out and the, you can see it just slips in and that's all you gotta do to get those back on track. Went ahead and grabbed the drill for this one. I don't generally like to use a drill on any screws or fasteners that are on door panels just in case you accidentally slip. 
Uh, even the most intelligent person has done that before. Uh, these are Phillips. They are actually, uh, I think they're a 3 8 or a 5 16 something like that. Uh, driver if you want to use that instead, but there's really no reason to. They're not super tight to begin with. I'm just going to go ahead and pop these out. The speaker usually does not fall. There's a little sealant behind it. Holds it in. Up here you got one clip connector. Press on the side, pull it out. Simple enough. Let's check out the speaker. So the speaker in this car is relatively simple and I know people will look at the speaker and compare it to some crap they bought off eBay. Uh, some people might be into higher audio, Sundown. Um, Scar is kind of a a cloner company, but some higher-end audio will be compared to this, and a lot of people really don't appreciate what this is. Um, it's very simplistic, it's very straightforward, that's kind of its job, that's what it's actually supposed to do, is just be simple, cheap, effective, last a good amount of time. So, it's got a plastic frame on it, it's probably got a one-inch voice coil, it's probably good for 30-40 watts. 2040. Yep, there we go. Um, simple connectors. The plastic basket frame actually is better than stamped steel because the resonant frequency of plastic is a lot lower, especially this specific one. Let's see here. Yeah, they've got some uh, material stuff there. So the, ma the magnet is FE, which would be ferrite. And then we've got uh, the plate itself, which is the steel is SPHC, which is probably um, an ultra low carbon. The lower the carbon metal, the better for a speaker motor assembly itself because the metal doesn't rob magnetic flux from the magnets assembly. And then uh, the yoke is the center part. I'm trying to see what the frame is made out of, but it doesn't say. Well, either or, it's probably a uh, ABS with glass fiber in it. But that actually helps with what's called fringe field, which is when the magnetic field from this, for instance, you're here, it sucks into it. That field is usually bad for the voice coil beyond its actual intended purpose, which is to attract and repel the electronic signal from the amplifier. It actually causes distortion. So by using a plastic frame, they keep magnetic fields from coming up through here. They also minimize resonance, which would cause the speaker to fight a frequency that it may play and then it's got a nice soft rubber surround on it at least it feels like a beautiful rubber it could be a uh, high density foam with a topper on it these are little cone reinforcements simple dust cap nothing spectacular but it, it certainly does the job the response isn't horrible and considering the price price point for these it fit the target for Kia's use so now that we're into the door speaker hole Depending on the speaker that you have chosen to upgrade to, be it a full range, dedicated mid range, you name it, whatever, um, most likely chance, anytime you install a speaker in a door, you're going to want to roll the window all the way down when you install the speaker. If you had it up right now, you're like, oh, look at all this room for activities and shit. If you did that, when you roll the window down, you're likely to intrude into the actual magnet assembly. Now you can see here, unlike a standard speaker, there's only maybe two inches between the back of the back plate and this mounting front, uh, flange here. And they've got most of that assembly in this above part to get it out of the door and away from the window. So what you're going to need is a plastic spacer. For me, in the past, I've preferred PRV. They're full dedicated mid-ranges. They're very snappy. Um, I love the response. They work very well. They have a very strong motor for, you know, motor force and such. Um, simple design. They're very cheap. They last a good amount of time. And then we've got spacer rings. Now, I went with half inch, and I'll find out here relatively soon if that's going to be a problem. Uh, so, with these plastic spacer rings, they're very cheap. They usually have universal hole patterns on them. Uh, you can see one, two. Maybe you can't. One, two. Three, four is likely what our pattern is in order to put these on. So you can see they have four already counterboard in there, but of course they do not line up, and that is because these speakers themselves are actually not 
a standard 6.5. You can see the bolt pattern on the ring. The ring itself is actually smaller than the bolt pattern. But that is not a problem because if you take screws, be it whatever kind you wish to use, I guess you could use wood screws if you're really feeling festive about it. Um, I would recommend probably a machine head screw. It, it really isn't going to matter a whole lot. You could also drill this out and use like a 832 or 1024 and bolt this to it. It's, it's really whatever you want. Down here, you have a little opening. But uh, you'll use your ring because if we compare it, you'll see here they're about the same height. Really not very far off. Um, you can see they're almost dead on. But if you look at the mounting, the distance between here and here is about there. We have this whole distance here that we actually have to make up to avoid uh, the window itself. Now I'm sure there's more room than exactly that, but you can see I went with the half inch instead of the one inch to get us a lot closer to that actual flange. So I'm going to go ahead and toss one of these in and we'll see if uh, it clears. But that is for another day and or update because this one was just covering the door card. Um, the driver's door is the same deal. Pop out this plastic cover. Phillips behind there. Pop out the rubber finger guard thingy. There's a Phillips behind there. And then pop out this little plastic cover plate. And there's a screw behind there. Start on the bottom, right on your lip, pull it, pop your clips all the way around, pop this out beyond this molding, and then tip the door card up at an angle like this, and then pull out from underneath that part. Back door is similar. Screw behind here, screw in here, no screw here. So you should just have to go through, pop it off just like you normally would. There's another space right here. Pop it off, and then on the other side, exact same deal. So that covers how to take the door cards out. I might make a video later on on what a, my total plan is for the audio, but uh, that covers door cards if anybody wants to upgrade speakers.